Well, it's the Energy Solutions Arena. It was the Delta Center up until Monday, so no change there. And in for Joel Myers tonight. This is Greg Pop alongside Stu Lance here in Salt Lake City as we check out the starters for Phil Jackson's Lakers, who have won four in a row, same lineup. And as far as the starting fives that they have used since game three, a backcourt of Smush and Colby. And the front line is Luke with Bynum in the middle and Lamar Odom uh, next to him. Bill Jackson throughout his career, 16 and 8, in his uh, matchups with the Lakers against the Utah Jazz. And you see his overall record, including his time with the Chicago Bulls. Jerry Sloan's five some. He does get Kirilenko back tonight. He'll start at small forward. So Ronnie Brewer will drop into the backcourt and join uh, Darren Williams there. Kirilenko at small forward next to Okur. And of course, uh, Carlos Boozer right now, who is playing like an all star for Jerry Sloan. The other night picked up his 900th career win with the Jazz. Now he is 901, and he's five away from 1,000 in his career with the NBA, including his time with the Chicago Bulls. What a shocking start for the Utah Jazz, who were a 500 team last year. Did not even make the playoffs. In fact, they have not made the playoffs each of their last three years, too. But right now, they have the best record in the NBA at 11-1. And a new look for the uh, Utah Jazz, not just a new name on the arena, but they're going to their Carolina blue uniforms. They're going to use these predominantly when they go on the road, but they uh, did wear these uniforms uh, the other night, and they're going to wear them again for a second time at home. So Okura will jump against Bynum, and two of the top three teams record-wise in the NBA are underway from Salt Lake City. And the Lakers will go first. Luke Walton throws it inside to Bynum over O'Cour, and he knocks down the first shot of the game. Luke Walton throwing numbers up dramatically from his first couple of years in the NBA. Here's Darren Williams now, just a second-year point guard out of Illinois. We are experiencing uh, some technical problems with Stu's microphone. Here's Carlos Boozer over Bynum, and the rebound taken down by Lamar Odom. Utah Jazz won their first four games this year, lost in New Jersey, then they rattled off seven straight victories as Odom, being very assertive early in the game, takes it all the way inside and draws the foul on Boozer. So Odom will be on the free throw line for a couple. Overall, a poor game for Odom against the Clippers on uh, Tuesday, but he did make a couple of free throws late in the game, which stretched out that lead to five points. Well, I think Lamar is the type of player, though, that bounces back rather rapidly. I mean, it, got, it wasn't necessarily a poor performance. I know he shot uh, free throws rather poorly as he starts uh, tonight's game off with a miss. And normally when it happens there, it, it all becomes mental. Players just start thinking about missing shots, and they continue to do it. He was 4 of 10 from the line Tuesday and against the Clippers. Overall, 77% on the year. Gets the second one, and the Lakers lead 3-0. Utah Jazz are the second highest scoring team in the NBA at almost 108 points a game. And here's their top scorer, Boozer. Here's the point guard, Williams, who will shoot a lot. And the rebound taken by Smush. Here come the Lakers. Jazz get two players back, and Smush will get tied up going to the goal there. Well, I think the Lakers got out. I got a break on this call, a very quick jump ball call as Smush was a little bit out of control coming down, trying to give a move uh, to Darren Williams, but Darren didn't really go for it. And Smush, and, you know, I've said, seen this many times with Smush. One of the things he needs to work on is when he has the ball out in the open floor and trying to make a move like that, he gets his head too far in front of his feet, and he loses his balance. He's got to get his head up a little bit, and I think his balance will be a lot better. And he decided to drive on two members of the Jazz who got back defensively. There's Kobe slipping it inside to Luke along the baseline. He missed one from point blank range. Here's Darren Williams, the big point guard, who was the third overall pick in the draft in 05. Here, Linko. And Boozer comes out the other side. Well, last year they were uh, really unhappy. A lot of the fans unhappy with Carlos Boozer, but right now, they love him because he's just showing what he does when he's healthy. There's Kobe Bryant, and he knocks down a jumper after knocking Ronnie Brewer back. And that was a good no call. I mean, there was no harm there on that play, so go ahead and let the, let him play a little bit. There's Karolinko, who sprained uh, his ankle in Milwaukee about 10 days ago and missed five games. 
Boozer battling injury problems the last couple of years, and that's a kick ball. And they'll put the shot clock up to 14 as we look at Kobe's first shot of the game. Well, again, you know, I talked about no harm, no foul. You know, there's contact, but really not much there. And the officials ruled it wasn't enough to call an offensive foul, and he knocks down the jumper. Back live, Carlos Boozer will shoot a lot from outside with the miss, but Memo Okur able to knock it inside. Okur, a 6'11", fifth-year player out of Turkey who will uh, score a lot and also rebound about nine a game for them. Kirilenko matching up with Odom, blocks a shot. But that's what Kirilenko does as well as anybody in the game. He is an excellent shot blocker. Second best in the NBA last year. The feed to Boozer loves that fadeaway. Here comes Kobe and the Lakers. Boozer has missed three of his first four shots tonight. Kobe's made his first two. And the Lakers lead 7-4. to four. And that shouldn't surprise anybody. <laughs> last year's leading scorer in the league uh, makes his first two. Yeah, he was very assertive early on Tuesday against the Clippers, striking for 20 in the opening quarter. Here, Lenko with a long run right over Luke Wolf. Well, I would say that ankle injury is a thing of the past. He comes out, knocks down a jumper, and he's already got his specialty, a block shot. Well, it's amazing. No rust on his game. He comes right in with a lot of rhythm to it as he helped miss there. Around the goal, Luke Walton with a miss. Darren Thanks. Williams spinning. Thanks to Car uh, Karolinko again. And Boozer up the floor. And the Jazz take a one-point lead. Well, you start your offense with good defense. And you can get out in transition with either a turnover, steals, or a block shot. As Luke tries to make good penetration, he does. But Kirilenko definitely gets a piece of that one. And that gets the Jazz going the other way. And Boozer in close, making it happen. Carlos Boozer, a 76% free throw shooter. And the rebound taken by Luke Walton. Boozer, a Cleveland Cavalier, the first couple of years of his career, now with Utah for a third year. The first two years, he was largely injured, having a real breakout year this year as Odom sweeps across the middle. Occur to Williams. He can make that shot from long range. And the rebound pulled by Boozer. That is his specialty, believe it or not. Mimino Core prefers to be around the perimeter. Here he is again. Inside to Boozer again with a fadeaway. And that is Bob, excuse me, uh, Carlos Boozer's <laughs> specialty there. Is about a 15 foot on in. He is really a deadly shooter. His 60% on the year is an attest to that. Well, nicely done going back door on the feed there by Smush Parker. Luke Walton got the Lakers first basket, and now he has his second one there. Right back come the Utah Jazz. The Jazz historically have looked to, looked to push the tempo more when they play here in a rarefied air of Salt Lake City. Ryan lost the ball right to Luke Walton for a three-point shot, and Luke's only got seven points. Well, I wonder if the official scorer will give Kobe an assist on that play. <laughs> They have. You were just joking, and they have given him an assist. Well, a pass that leads directly to a basket. He has yes, eight of Utah's 12. Karolinko right back into their attack, doing it with the passing, scoring, and shot blocking. Smush Parker, good game against the Clippers on Tuesday, a season-high 15. And a rebound taken by Brewer. The Utah Jazz, not only are they... Uh, the second highest scoring team in the NBA, Stu, but they're also by far the best rebounding team in the league. That says a lot about what Boozer and uh, now with Kirilenko coming back, what they can all do. And Kerr with the rebound. And back out to Williams. That's a long two-pointer. Not a three or two, but he rounded it. First basket of the game for Darren Williams. Luke Walt. And they tangle inside Odom and Kirilenko. And they got the foul on Lamar Odom. Well, Kirilenko uh, putting a body on Lamar and the official rule that Lamar walking him under the basket, walked him a little too aggressively and gets called for the foul. First foul of the game on Lamar Odom. And the second foul on the Lakers. Jazz and Lakers will meet again this coming Thursday at Staples. A 
great look by Kirilenko as the Utah Jazz are getting a lot of backdoor cutters and very good passes for easy ones inside. Well, too many backdoor cuts already. I mean, we're only uh, halfway through the first quarter, and they've got three of those. Utah Jazz have scored eight baskets in this game. Incredibly, they have seven assists. Kobe, the extra move, and he hit the underside of the backboard against Ronnie Brewer's defense. You must always be aware of whoever Kirilenko is guarding because he is a shot blocker from the weak side. Well, Brewer, it's off to a sizzling start as they have hit nine of their first 16. They're picking it up where they left off in Sacramento on Thanksgiving Eve on Wednesday night. They scored 73 points in the second half of that game, Stu, and shot 71% from the floor. Well, they've got too many points in the paint to start this game. 12 of their 18 in the paint. Ronnie Brewer is fouled by Luke Walton. Otherwise, he would have had a layup. Well, the Jazz come out of the gates in a hurry. Their crowd, boy, they're on their feet already as the Jazz lead by six. Well, Lakers down 18-12 here in Salt Lake City. Hey, Laker fans, you could win a prize package that includes a pair of tickets to a Laker home game and a free $6 burger from Carl's Jr. All winners at the end of the season will be randomly selected for the grand prize of a couple of uh, free trips for two to Las Vegas to see the Lakers. Just text message your choice to the following question, and here it is tonight. Who is the biggest off-season acquisition in the Pacific Division? Tim Thomas to the Clippers, A. Vlad Radmanovich to the Lakers, B. Or Marcus Banks to the Phoenix Suns, C. Just text the number 86212 on your cell phone, and you could be the winner. Text your choice now. And here's an old friend, Derek Fisher, a couple of years with the Golden State Warriors, then an offseason trade, and now he is the backup point guard for the Utah Jazz and Jerry Sloan. But many years with the uh, Los Angeles Lakers, everybody still in Los Angeles thinks the world of that man. He's got three rings because of his uh, contributions to the Lakers. And uh, he's just just one of the best quality people you will ever, ever meet. Now he's a good guy to be sure. And he made one of the biggest shots in NBA playoff history to uh, win that playoff game, that game five against the San Antonio Spurs in 04. Well, the free throws, one made, one missed. Ronald Brewer on the steal. Kobe back, and Brewer goes in for a dunk. And Utah's got a quick nine-point lead. Well, read the pass that time. Brewer did. Put his left hand out, tipped the ball to free, and the rest was pretty nice. Ronnie Brewer, just a rookie, the 14th overall pick in last June's draft out of Arkansas. A tremendous athlete. Well, that, that trip to the basket just now shows you what kind of an athlete he is. I mean, he just elevated. And one of those clean dunks where he dunks it Man. almost without touching the rim. I and mean, he just up, up, and just fires it through. That, that's a nice looking play. He remembers dad, Ron Brewer, played uh, with Sidney Moncrief and uh, Marvin Delp, part of the triplets at, at Arkansas, and was a longtime NBA player. Lamar Odom, a three pointer missing out of the rebound, out of bounds. Now Lamar off to a slow start, Stu. He's missed his first three. Yeah, but, you know, the scoring mentality is I don't worry about missing my first three because I know I'm going to make my next three. The players will start thinking about it. Don't do as well. But they are destroying the Lakers in the paint. They've got 23 points and 16 of the 23 in the paint. That's Matt Harpering, the veteran who sliced right through. Well, they scored 72 points in the paint against the Sacramento Kings on Wednesday night. As Kwame answers back, Kwame with a nice game against the Clippers on Tuesday. And you heard the conversation with John Ireland uh, earlier. Not quite getting, uh, not quite to 100 percent, but getting better with that shoulder. You know, in talking with Kwame, he's, he's already realized that it's something that may cause him a little discomfort throughout the year. He just has to learn to deal with it. Redmanovic now in for the Lakers. Okor to Boozer from the baseline. Shot clock ringing as it rimmed out. And Radmanovic, the rebound. Here come the Lakers now with Kobe Bryant. Smush Parker in the backcourt. Kobe spins all the way in. Gets fouled and scores. I don't know if there's a player in the league that can make that particular move any better than Kobe. Where he drives baseline and you're taught defensively to shut the baseline off. Well, he spins in despite the second defender coming. He splits the two of them. Goes up. Gets a three-point opportunity. He is very good at that. Uh, but I must admit, though, he's 
Very he's pretty good, good everywhere. And everything. And, yeah, he's not bad. He had 27 40 point games a year ago, which is just remarkable. An all time Lakers single season record. He got his first for Coach Phil on Tuesday against the Clippers, and he's off to a quick start tonight. He had 20 in the opening quarter. Uh, on Tuesday, he's already got seven points in nine minutes tonight. Here's Harpering. He's a very good shooter coming off the screen. So Kaur lost the ball. Nicely done by Kwame. And the Lakers take it away. Kobe will pop it up over Brewer and rattle it down. Nine points for Kobe Bryant. Well, and he realizes that, you know, they will, they fell behind by 11 and he got aggressive again. So if they, if they can keep their aggressiveness on the defensive end and stop giving up the easy ones, they're all right. Derek Fisher. Nicely done to Boozer for a lay-in. Clever play by Fish. Again, just too easy. Too easy. Utah shooting 57% from the floor. Kobe answers right back. He is tearing up Brewer now. <laughs> 11 points for Kobe here. Welcome to the NBA and facing the NBA scoring champion of a year ago. And that's what Ronnie Brewer right now is going through. The rookie out of Arkansas checking the great Kobe Bryant. And here he comes trying to answer back. Good matchup, and Kobe has the tip. And that is not off of Fisher, but rather off of Kobe. Shot clock at seven. Oh, Kobe mad at himself. He read this play and almost came away with the steal. We've got a timeout. Lakers battling back after trailing by 11. They see themselves down by only four. 11 now down at four. They're going to fly home after the game tonight. Three in a row at Staples. Actually, four, including the Clipper game. But home games against the Nets on Sunday, the Bucks on Tuesday, and the Utah Jazz will make their only appearance to Southern California on Thursday night as we check in with John Ireland. Thank you, Greg. Glad Mad Radovich is out there again for the Lakers right there. Phil Jackson said before the game he would like Radmanovich to be a starter. He wants to bring Luke Walton off the bench. But Radmanovich has been so cold and Walton has been so good that Phil doesn't think he can make the switch with an 8-3 and three start as Vlad battles for that rebound and eventually goes to Kwame. Is too good to mess with. He's going to continue to bring Vlad off the bench until his hand gets better. And speaking of uh, better, there's Kobe Bryant finally missing one. But guys, look for Vlad to be a starter before the end of the year. Back That's to you, Greg. That's very interesting as Hoffman goes in for a lay-in and Utah goes back up by six. Luke Walton and I do a very good uh, Start. He had seven right away, and of course, Radmanovich has that nagging ligament injury in his right hand that has kind of held back his first year as a Laker. There's no question it's affected his shooting, but he's trying to do other things to make sure that he can still contribute. And uh, I'm sure Phil would like to see, obviously, a lot of that continue, but also would like to see his hand start to allow him to do what he does best. Maurice Evans with a miss a moment ago after coming into the game. Sasha is in to play at point guard. The Lakers were hopeful that uh, Jordan Farmar would come back after his ankle injury, but Farmar is not going to play in the game tonight. So Sasha will play as the uh, backup point guard. Matching up with Derek Fisher. Jaron Collins now into the game for Utah. Their backup center rejected there by Kwame. And there's the play that, you know, obviously players love the block shots. They like to throw them out of bounds. But if you could just tap this one, don't swing so hard. Just tap it. Then the Lakers would have retrieved that one, been going the other way. As a result, the Jazz still have five seconds to get an attempt. Harpering inbounds. Derek Fisher, the fade. And the rebound to Redmanovich. Kobe's played the entire opening quarter. He has 11 points on five of eight shooting. Three second violation called on the uh, defense of the Utah Jazz and Jaron Collins. So Kobe will be on the free throw line. You know, when Kobe has the ball in the post, especially, <laughs> seemingly everybody turns their head to either look to see what he's going to do or look to be helping. And sometimes you get caught in that illegal defensive uh, position and you pay the price. Talking to Jerry Sloan before the game. Jerry's never happy with the way his team is playing, even though they're 11 and 1 and they have the best record. Uh, in the NBA, they've been falling behind huge numbers in games and not playing as well defensively as, uh, as he would like. They've got the early lead tonight. There's Sasha with a quick pop over Fisher and he knocks it down and he pulls the Lakers within three. 
I like the way that uh, Sasha has handled uh, coming off the bench or the lack thereof. He's doing a pretty good job of it. Here's Kobe. Mo Evans along the baseline to Kwame. Shot clock at 37 now and 15 uh, or 37 in the quarter and 15 on the shot clock. Gordan Giracek now into the game for the Utah Jazz out of Croatia. Matching up with Kobe Bryant and Kobe takes him inside just like he abused Brewer. He takes apart Giracek. Kobe with 14 points in the opening quarter. It's a good thing they brought him along on this trip. <laughs> <laughs> They weren't going to leave him back, were they? Uh, I don't think so. And it's a short trip, one of the a few early season road trips for the Lakers. This is the only true road game between early November and early December, middle of December. As Fisher gets inside and draws the foul. They called the foul on uh, Redmanovich as Derek did a pretty good job of keeping his body in between himself and Kwame. But uh, Radmanovich was coming over to give some support and gets contact with the back of Derek Fisher, and that's where the foul is called. You know, Derek Fisher on the free throw line, where this year he's an 88% shooter. And he knocks down the first one to give himself a point tonight. Lamar Odom will get in and here for the last 4.6 of the quarter, and uh, Kwame will sit down as Phil will get a little smaller here. One. He wants to be able to push it up the floor in a hurry. 4.6 seconds. Uh, you want to make sure, number one, that the inbounds pass, you don't throw it away. Then you have some quickness in the, in the game to be able to do something with it. Fisher makes both. There's Sasha. And he'll shoot it himself. And that'll be the opening quarter. The Lakers were down 11. They wound up down three. Well, not a bad comeback by the Lakers. You know, you're playing against the NBA's best team at this point record-wise. You fall behind by 11, but you battle back. You enter the second quarter, and you're only down by a triple. Jazz lead the Lakers by three, 29 to 26 in the shooting percentages. Lakers not shooting that bad. Utah 13 out of 25. The assist, though, uh, Utah with 10, but points in the paint, 20 to 8. Then you look at how many they've got seven points in transition. And you can see how easy they've been able to score as Boozer and uh, Memo Core, whoever the case is, they've really gotten the job done in the paint. Lakers have to clean it up. As we mentioned, they scored 72 points in the paint. Wednesday night at Arco Arena, the most in, in a, any single game this year by a team. They've already on pace for 80 more tonight. Here's C.J. Miles, the young man who lost his spot in the starting lineup out of Skyline High School in Dallas, struggling a bit, and he misses his first one. Here, a check jumps on Mo Evans, lands right on his head, and they come away with it. Derek Fisher also hit the deck. Well, that's something Derek has been able to do throughout his career is create havoc defensively. Harper and calling for a timeout here as they tie it up. Jaron Collins and Radmanovich. Boy, a lot of bodies all over the floor. Gear check. Landed right on top of a Laker earlier. Watch this. Here's Fisher. Well, the ball was knocked free, and Derek Fisher, if it's free, he's probably going to get a hand on it. But it seemed like after that, everybody uh, decided that they were going to hit the deck as, again, ball knocked free, and then it happens to be a jump ball. Who will control the tap as Smush Parker comes back in and out goes Sasha. And it is Red Manovich out jumping uh, Jaron Collins, or at least out tipping the ball. Collins from uh, Harvard Westlake High School in Hollywood, where he uh, played with his twin brother Jason, and they went on to Stanford together. Offensive foul. They hooked on Lamar Odom as he tried to post up on the young man C.J. Miles. Well, they've been pretty consistent with this particular call this year as well, where you're trying to post up and you wrap your arms behind uh, around the defender who is behind you, trying to make sure he stays right where you want him to be. You have to make that move without your arms. You do it with your hips. Two fouls on Odom. There's the dunk put back in beautifully there. He's the, crowd favorite. Miles. He's the crowd favorite, boy. I tell you, he comes in and uh, <laughs> just a lot of energy. And he's not that big, Millsap. Pardon me, that's Millsap, not C.J. Miles. Here's the dunk along the baseline by uh, Mo Evans. And Evans answers right back with the dunk from Millsap. That's Paul Millsap, the uh, rookie round two pick out of Louisiana Tech, who had the last dunk for Utah. 
Here he is. He went to the same school as Carl Malone, and, well, he's rebounding like the mailman, at least early on. <laughs> That's a good-looking pass by uh, Kwame Brown to find Mo Evans alone under the basket. He'll sat now inside, and the ball tipped away and swiped by Odom. Good job again by Kwame getting a tip on that one. And Odom up the floor, scores right over Millsap. And just like that, Lakers down by only a point. They clean up their defense as far as allowing easy ones in the paint. Obviously, they'll be better served. Lakers playing without Kobe right now. Jaron Collins, here a check. No shot, offensive foul, probably on Millsap down low it is. And that wipes away the shot from Gearcheck. Yeah, moving screen that time. And the good thing because uh, Gearcheck was open and knocked down the shot that was waved off with the foul. Millsap has uh, been a revelation this rookie year, getting a lot of praise from Jerry Sloan, which is highly unusual for a young player. Lamar Odom just flips it in. Odom looks to be more assertive offensively with Kobe Bryant on the bench. Has to be. He really has to do, have almost the same type of mentality as Kobe when Kobe's not in the game. Lakers were down 11 at 23-12. Now they have the lead. Not for long. Millsap answers with a jump shot. Well, they love him here, and you're getting to see why. He's a hustle-type guy that is showing some skill. There's Garacek. Picking up Mo Evans now to the post for Odom. And he goes right in and scores easily over Millsap. Nicely done by Lamar Odom. Odom with three baskets here in the first three minutes of the second quarter. I, I don't like that matchup if, I'm, matchup if I'm Jerry Sloan. I would put uh, somebody else on Lamar on the box like that. As good a player as they think Millsap may be. Garacek knocks down a jumper. Gordon Gerichek, who missed seven straight games with right Achilles tendonitis, made his return on Wednesday in Sacramento. Smush Parker almost lost the behind-the-back dribble. Darren Williams back in, their point guard to pick him up. Kwame now getting doubled by Harper and steps right through it, though, and scores. Well, they don't send that second defender, and Kwame getting very proficient at backing his man where he wants him and then shooting the little jump hooks. Kwame has four points off the bench, and the Lakers back up 36-35. Harpering all the way in. Boy, he's a good scorer in the mid-range game. Most guys have to take it yeah. all the way in or shoot it long. Harpering can score in the mid-range. He knows his limitations, too. That's one thing that Jerry Sloan likes about him. He doesn't take uh, shots generally out of his range. Now he's guarding Odom. Here, check slapping in on Lamar, and a whistle and a foul will be called. I thought they would switch uh, defenders as they have. Well, Millsap came in off the bench and ignited this team with some of his hustle plays, including that follow dunk, and it has the Jazz up by a point. Welcome back to Salt Lake City. I'm John Ireland, where the Lakers trail the Jazz by one. You might be wondering, if you're just tuning in, why the Lakers are wearing their home jerseys, their gold jerseys. That's because Utah is wearing their alternate jerseys, which are a blue color, so you have to wear light. The NBA asked the Lakers to wear their alternate jerseys, guys, the ones that are white. The Lakers decided not to because they've established a tradition of wearing those at home on Sundays. It was probably a good idea. So far this year in these jerseys, the Lakers are 7-1. and one. In their purple jerseys, they're 1-2. So far, so good. Back to you, Greg. So don't tell anybody. It's just like we're at Staples Center. Now, Utah is uh, breaking out uh, some new looks when they go on the road, John, as the driving flip by Mo Evans is uh, in a foul inside. Kwame Brown able to put it in. Beautifully done there by the Lakers and good penetration by Mo Evans. But Utah, when they go on the road now, they're going to wear black jerseys. This is the first score the Lakers have with second chance opportunities. As that's a shot attempt by uh, Maurice Evans that's missed. And Kwame's there to clean it up, get the basket and the foul. He's got a three point play. Lakers have uh, come out firing here to open play in the second quarter without Kobe Bryant. They have uh, been scoring uh, readily. Well, the Utah Jazz are wearing like a Carolina blue now when they go on the road. They wear black, all black, black sneakers, black socks. And we're not even inside the Delta Center anymore, Stu. The Energy Solutions Arena. Energy Solutions. Here a check for Utah and uh, Kirilenko 
Another basket uh, in the paint. That's four for gear check. And they announced the uh, change in the naming rights for this building, formerly known as the Delta Center on uh, Monday. Rights have been sold to the Energy Solutions, a Salt Lake City-based company that disposes of and recycles low-level radioactive waste. Not in Springfield. We are in Salt Lake City as uh, Kirilenko gets the foul. Obviously, that's not going over real big here in Salt Lake City. Kobe coming back into the game, but there's only one second on the shot clock. One second. All of the Lakers should look up and uh, make sure they know that situation because this has to be a catch-shoot. Catch, shoot, Kobe hit the rim, and the rebound tipped back out by Luke Walton, beautifully done. And Kobe stumbles in, and he goes down. He was tripped. He's all right. Well, Luke does a great job of putting so much pressure on the two Jazz players for the rebound that they don't handle it, and he taps it out, and that led to Kobe getting tripped up and giving the Lakers another possession. Foul on uh, Gordon Giracek of uh, Utah. And the Lakers with Kobe back in and Luke Walton back in. So they mop up some perspiration along the baseline. And that is so important to make sure that the court is as dry as possible. Players step on a wet spot, and I know firsthand that can lead to a serious injury. And here's Lamar Odom. Against Kirilenko, one of the great defenders in the NBA, out to Luke for an open three. Luke leads the lead in three-point shooting early on, but he missed that one. Smush Parker circles back out. Back inside to Kwame. Odom with the pop. And the rebound almost tipped in by Luke Walton, but off the back of the rim. Darren Williams, Okur. Here a check for three, well short. When he left his hand, you knew that was going to be a brick. He did not shoot well Wednesday in Sacramento, his return game after being out for seven games. He was one for six from the floor, gear check. He is two for three tonight, his first miss. Odom going at Boozer. Shot clock at five. Kobe in the baseline for three. Kobe Bryant with 17 points here. Well, <laughs> Jenny. No real news bulletin to that. Yes, he can score. I don't care if he isn't 100%. He can score. Boozer on the other end does it entirely differently, but he's the NBA's 17th leading scorer this year at over 22 and a half a game. He's got 12 tonight. And the old adage is so true, especially with Boozer. The better screen you set, the better chance you have of scoring yourself. Aaron Williams almost palmed that ball. I don't know how he got away with that, as he was going to scoop it, and then he flipped it over. Yeah, fortunately, he was up in the air, and uh, as a result, he still turned it over. Jerry Sloan won't be too happy about that. 5.28 to go in the half, and the Lakers, well, they're up by a point. Kobe leading the way with 17. In Utah, six out of nine. Remember to be a part of our text message question tonight. And here it is. It was the biggest offseason acquisition in the division. Tim Thomas right now leading it with 44% of the uh, votes in going to Tim. We had Manovich of the Lakers and Banks of Phoenix also your choices. Very early in the year. Only played 10 or 11 games. Just the uh, text number is 86212 on your cell phone, and you could be the winner. Text your choice now. We'll keep you updated throughout the game. Greg Papa in for Joel Myers tonight alongside Stu Lance and John Ireland. And Salt Lake City, Utah. Beautiful day here in Salt Lake City today as Bynum gets inside and scores. Oh, travel. He traveled and the basket is negated. Well, the official was only a foot away from him, so I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt and say that the official said he moved the left foot. Well, he didn't. No, he did not. <laughs> his left foot was his pivot. And he almost came to a complete jump stop where either foot could have been his pivot. Kirilenko trying to make that tough skip pass to Boozer, and the Lakers swipe it. There's Smush Parker off the screen by Bynum. Into Bynum, and he got fouled from behind by Hartring. The basket counts. Wow, that's, wow. that's the epitome of continuation. <laughs> I think they made up for the uh, traveling call they made a moment ago. Yeah, a little cosmetic there. This was a good heartbeat later. Watch well, this. He hits there, there, then he Boom. shoots. So he never puts it on the floor. I, I don't think that's continuation, really. But uh, we'll they're going to yeah, they're gonna give it. Now they're going to wipe it off. Yeah, they got to. Yeah. No basket now. The officials, Derek Stafford, Leroy Richardson, and Derek Richardson get together, and they do the right thing. 
There's no way that basket should have counted. So Bynum will get two free throws. And he's a good free throw shooter. He's got, if you look at him as a seven footer, the rotation, the, me the mechanics, uh, he shoots the ball relatively uh, well, soundly from that position as he knocks down the first of two. 76% free throw shooter this season, as he has now made at 36 of 47 on the year. Lakers up to Bynum's first point of the game. And the teenager knocks down the second one, and the Lakers lead 44 to 41. Matches their biggest lead of the game. And they were down 11 and 23 to 12 with about four and a half to go in the opening quarter. Little court. Harpering along the baseline where he's so clever off the pick from Boozer and the rebound taken by Odom and the Lakers. Lakers have Smush Parker and Kobe in there. Starters are back in with Bynum, Odom, and Luke. Quiet game offensively for Smush so far. He's only taken one shot. He's not yet scored. Kobe's uh, picking up the slack. Rebound to Harpering in Utah. Another rebound for the Jazz. They have out-rebounded the Lakers 18-14. to 14. And Boozer uh, and Okor have 13 of the 18. Darren Williams. Back up by Boozer. Just beats over the offensive glass. Boy, is he a live body. Active. That's what it is. It's all about activity. You set a high screen. If you don't get it, goes up for the shot, and you roll to the rim to follow the flight of the basketball and uh, have a chance for an offensive rebound. So Boozer at the line. Looking to add to his point total of 12. And he's averaging almost 23 a game, 22.7 to be precise. His career numbers coming into this year still just slightly better than 14. The big question is, can Boozer keep this up for an entire year? Well, I think if he can stay healthy, yes, I think he can keep this up. In this system, this system fits him pretty well. So I think he could do that again. It all depends on his, uh, his health. Bynum had that poked out by Harpering. The Lakers will get the basketball. Bynum actually lobbying for a foul on Harpering. 44-42. The officials even listen to 19-year-olds. They don't listen no. to anybody, let alone 19. -year -olds. Especially in Salt Lake City, Utah. Here's Oldham now against Harpering. They double him with Boozer. Smush trying to get going. And he gets fouled. But the beauty now is Kirilenko is guarding Kobe. He won't leave Kobe nearly as much uh, as a secondary defender to go get a block as he would anybody else. So you could get some situations like with Lamar on the box or a cutting uh, Smush Parker that gets fouled. So it's interesting to see how Kirilenko adjusts to trying to stay home. Well, Smush trying to get his first points of the night after a season high 15 against the Clippers on Tuesday. And he makes it 45 to 42. Kind of had a feeling. Kirilenko, they thought he'd be back a couple of games before. You knew he was pointing to <laughs> this game in a matchup with Kobe Bryant. And uh, he did not start on him defensively, but uh, he certainly, for Jerry Sloan, will guard him in the fourth quarter to be sure. And guarding him right now as well. As uh, you know, most players, <laughs> they kind of circle the Lakers on their schedule to make sure they're available for the marquee games. And for the miss, rebounded by Bynum. Lakers up by four here with 3.15 to play in the half. Well, Nice feed into Bynum. He waited a little bit. He hopped and he missed a very makeable shot. Yeah, he did. That's a nice catch, though, by Andrew. Those, those passes can be tough for Biggs to handle. Those will love that move. And he'll very quickly sweep across the lane and take a fade. The Lakers haven't given up nearly as many uh, backdoor situations as they did in the first five minutes. Bynum tied up. No whistle. Clean. Kirilenko, Harper, and Boozer. All started on the defensive end, though. Yeah, if you want to run, you better do two things pretty well. One is play defense and rebound. And if you can get some loose ball situations, it makes it easier still. Kirilenko against Kobe. A screen from Odom. 
Offensive foul on Lamar Odom. And let me tell you why they called this one. It was a good screen, but as he got contact, he started to pivot to move. And there's where the contact and the movement got him in a little bit of trouble. That's the third foul on Lamar. Will he be back? Yeah, he won't be back until the second half. Viento en Chevy, súbete. Long side, Stu Lance, Greg Papa back in uh, Salt Lake City, Utah. Lamar Odom just picked up his third foul of the opening half, and he will take a seat. And here's number three. Well, setting a screen at the pinch post area and movement on it. Kobe's coming off. As soon as the contact comes, he's moving. But was he being held by the arms of Kirilenko? Well, the official said no. Foul on Smush Parker. Ronnie Turiap has come in for the Lakers now to finish up the uh, first half as Smush picks up his first foul. Turiap in for Lamar Odom. You can tell it hasn't been a flow game for Lamar yet. He doesn't have any assists. When he doesn't have any assists, uh, the flow isn't there yet for him. Turiap with a foul as he left his feet and landed on Boozer. Very up trying to warm up after missing the last three. He's had bursitis in his hips, a problem he has dealt with since his playing days at Gonzaga. But it all happens because of dribble penetration by uh, Darren Williams. And uh, wasn't handled cleanly, but he finally gets his hands on it. Now he's looking to get his 16th and 17th point. Well, Utah Jazz are good again, and it's no secret that Sasha will come in here for the final couple of minutes of the half. And Jerry Sloan is leading on the a point forward, point guard, or a power forward, uh, point guard combination like he had for so many years with Carl Malone and uh, John Stockton. Now he's got Carlos Boozer, a power forward, and young Darren Williams playing at point guard. Well, Boozer now ties Kobe for game high in scoring with 17 apiece, and teams are tied at 46. Good game so far. Two of the best in the NBA. Utah Jazz have the best record in the league, shockingly at 11 and 1. And the LA Lakers are at 8 and 3. They have the third best record in the league behind only uh, San Antonio and the Jazz. Bynum with a nice jump hook right over a corner, wants a foul, but that, won't get it. That was a nice, decisive move by Andrew Bynum. Lakers putting some pressure on. They break it. Humphrey able to take it inside and get a foul. <laughs> Andrew upset. That's the most uh, I've seen Andrew get upset in a ball game in his young career. He felt that he didn't do anything, that the offensive guy created all of the contact. But that last move wasn't by a youngster. <laughs> that was a seasoned move there. And uh, Okor pleading for help from the official. You better do it with your footwork. And back on the other end, right? I'm very angry. He had to be pulled away by Kobe. He didn't think he fouled Harper. Well, again, who created the contact? I mean, he's just standing there, and Harbring jumps into him, and he says, well, what did I do? And, you know, Kobe making sure that the youngster doesn't get a technical, especially uh, as quick as the officials are this year at uh, blowing the whistle for offensive, or excuse me, for technical fouls. Harbring, two years in Orlando Magic, a year in Cleveland, a year in Philadelphia, now fifth-year Utah Jazz, makes both free throws, eight off the bench for Jerry Sloan. And we are tied at 48. Harpring picks up Walton. There's a great matchup. Kirilenko, one of the game's great defenders against Kobe. Kobe slipped it inside. Rebound. Darren Williams. Here come the Jazz. Let's go into Boozer. Now, when you're when it's three on one. When it's three on one and you're the only guy back defensively, you've got to almost damn, I mean, guess. You've got to just anticipate something or make them do exactly what you want them to do. And Sasha, the only man back, Darren Williams throws it, and all of a sudden the pass. But they called the foul on Sasha prior to the basket. They said he pushed so no Darren Williams in the chest, so that wipes away the wow. dunk. So Great as it play. turns out, not a bad play by Sasha as he gives the ball to the Jazz on the sideline, and all now it's five on five. Boy, what a tremendously smart play that was. I don't know if it was an intentional play. Uh, he just hit the first guy, even though he didn't have the, the ball. A reminder coming up at halftime, join Alan Massengale and uh, Big Game James in the studio for our halftime report. The Jack in the Box halftime report. I don't think I've ever seen that happen before. 
Or you foul the passer and leave the guy to go in and score, and it's the right play. <laughs> well, that was brilliant. Well, I said gamble a little bit. I guess that was a pretty good gamble, but it all depends on what happens here with these free throws as well. I mean, uh, they got a dunk for two. Now, if Darren Williams knocks down two, yeah, which he does it. turns out to be a good foul. Well, either way. Maximum of one point. Take away a dunk. What a great play by Sasha. Very smart. DJ Miles checking it down. One away to play. In the half, still tied at 48 is Darren Williams. And he's having a rough game. Great numbers this year. Last year was his rookie year. Very high draft pick out of Illinois. He was the third overall pick in 2005. Ahead of Chris Paul. A lot of debate on that. But in his second year, he's playing real well. well Sasha looks like a genius now. He missed both free throws. Luke Walton back the other way. Gets fouled. Nice read by Luke. Comes up, catches the ball with his back to the basket. And a lot of times when you have a guy come off of you, they may want to switch on it. So you just read how they play it. Got the defender out of position, takes it to the basket, and gets fouled. So Luke will be at the charity stripe for the first time in the game. Luke had a quick start. He had seven points right away. He's been stuck on seven. Now he's got number eight as Kwame Brown re-enters for Phil Jackson. And Andrew Bynum will sit down. Resilient group this late through team uh, here in the first half. Uh, as I mentioned, falling behind by 11 early, but didn't panic at all. Just battled and battled. And now with less than a minute to go in the half, they lead by two. A very good early season uh, statement game for both sides. Utah Jazz have not lost at home. They're six and zero here. They have the best home record in the NBA. This one's on Sasha. Now they tried to double up on uh, Derek Fisher at midcourt, and uh, he still had his dribble, and he did a good job of stepping through and trying to get the foul, and he did that, just that, as they said that Sasha got the contact with Derek, so Derek Fisher to shoot a pair. He was the Lakers draft pick out of Arkansas Little Rock, the Trojans. Way back in 96, 24th overall pick in the draft. Trying to figure out who shoots their free throws higher, Derek or Carlos. Those are they both. As far as elevation. Yeah, I mean, they could bring rain with those shots. Almost land up at uh, Park City. Not quite skiing here yet, but very soon they expect some snow in the Wasatch Mountains coming this week as Fisher makes both. Well, that's the way to do it, though, to get that loft, isn't it? Yeah, but sometimes you can put a little too much arc on it, and I'd like to see both of them take a little bit off of it. There's Colby tied up by Derek Fisher. Nicely done by Derek Fisher tying up his former teammate. Well, you mentioned he came in in 96, so did his, the guy he's jumping against, Kobe Bryant. So as Kobe goes to the middle, Derek there to help, reaches in and gets the basketball, jump ball situation. So Kobe looking to try to tip to either Luke or Sasha and maintain uh, control of this possession. Violation on yep. Kirilenko. Kirilenko stepped in early. That's why he's streaking with the ball. It'll be Laker basketball. And you know, when you're going, when there's a jump ball like that, and you know that your teammate is uh, probably not going to get the tip, it's wise to try to steal the tap some way. And the Kirilenko knew where Kobe wanted to tip it, so he just moved a little too early. But that's not a bad point. Shot clock at 14, 35 and 9 tenths to play in the half. Walton will trigger the inbounds to Kwame. Kobe's on the other side. They'll go two for one and shoot here. Sasha tied, tees up a three and wins it. Good first half for Sasha. He has five points. He's played some good defense as well. See how the Lakers end this half uh, defensively here. If they just don't give up uh, either an easy win or to pick up a, a foul. Fisher behind the back to Okur. And then a throw away. Bobble there in the corner. That's CJ Miles, the young man who lost his starting spot. Second year player on a Skyline High School in Dallas, really struggling of late. And the Lakers, with eight and a half to go, will get the last shot. Kwame will sit down. Red Manovich will come in. And they'll just try to flatten it out, give Kobe the ability to penetrate and drive and kick. 
And he kicks out to Rodmanovich with a high arcing three-pointer that rims out. Good luck there. As the Lakers get out of the first half with a three-point lead at 53 to 50. Kobe Bryant with a quick first quarter when he scored 14, wound up with 17. So 53-50, the Lakers lead in Utah. Let's now join Alan Massengale and James Worthy for the Jack in the Box Halftime Report. 23-12 with about four and a half to play in the opening quarter. Then Kobe got hot, and they were down just three at halftime. Then outscored, or after one quarter, then outscored the uh, Utah Jazz 27-21 in that second quarter. As the Lakers are lead by three as we get set to start the second half. Rick Popper rejoined by Stu Lance. Overall, a pretty good first half. We should have a very good second half. Well, hopefully we'll have a very good second half. You mentioned the first, though. I mean, I was very impressed with the way the Lakers were resilient after falling behind by 11 to the number one team in the NBA and not phase them at all. They continued to do the things that Phil Jackson wanted them to do for the most part, and they've gotten themselves a halftime lead. They've closed the gap a little bit with the points in the paint, but they still need to do a better job with that. Uh, getting to the free throw line and, and converting, that's important for the Lakers, and they've been very good at, at possession of the basketball. Only five turnovers. That's a very good half of ball because do the math. If they do five again, that's only ten, and I think Phil Jackson can live with five or excuse me, 10 turnovers in the game. As we always do, though, we like to find out what the coaching staff feels about that first half, so we go to John Ireland. John? Thank you, Stu. You talked about the fact that they're making their free throws. Remember, they missed 15 free throws against the Clippers on Tuesday night, so they only missed one in the first half. They complimented the team on that, but talk to them about rebounding. They've been out-rebounded 22-17. The Jazz has seven offensive rebounds. The Lakers only have three. The coaches feel if the Lakers clean up the board, they can control the second half. Back to you guys. All right, John. Kobe Bryant scored 14 of those 17 in the opening quarter, and uh, Carlos Boozer matched him point for point. The young star of these Utah Jazz averaging almost 23 a night. The first of three meetings between these two teams. They'll meet again coming up uh, this Thursday at Staples Center. Lakers home for the Nets on Sunday. The Bucks on Tuesday. Utah will be in on Thursday. Kirilenko. Here's Darren Williams, their young point guard, right into Boozer. Going to work on Bynum, facing him up, and dropping one down. Right over. And the advantage that an offensive player has by catching and facing without giving up his dribble is just that. He has a dribble. He's facing up, so the defender has to respect that he can't get too close or he gets beat off the dribble. Now, Kobe. With Ronnie Brewer back on him, that's the way they started the game. With Brewer gets airborne and his lands on Kobe. I think they're going to save Kirilenko's defense for when it matters down the stretch. <laughs> exactly the case. Uh, they want to make sure that they've got all the fouls for him to use when they need him to guard Kobe. Kobe puts the bait out there, and Brewer wow. didn't get a pregame meal, so <laughs> he went for all of it. Boy, he was hungry. Kobe made him pray, uh, made him pay. And that's the same kind of a play, though, that Kobe injured his shoulder a few years back where he did the pump fake, guy lands on his shoulder, and Kobe was out for uh, a little while. Not nearly as long as they had anticipated, but yet he missed a few games. Missed the first free throw. Kobe was 15 of 18 from the line against the Clippers on his way to 40 on Tuesday. Knocks down the second free throw. He is 3 of 4 from the line. 7 of 12 floor for 18 points. Boozer now with 19 to lead all scorers. And here is Boozer. And took back in by Brewer. Well, the help came from the box, man. That was Kobe trying to help on the drive. Nobody could get to Brewer. He had a free uh, free jump. He made it, made most of it. Utah Jazz out rebound their opponents by more than 11 a game. By far the biggest edge of any team in the NBA. And they have a seven rebound edge on the Lakers tonight, 24 to 17. I mean, 11 more rebounds than your opponents. They get up a lot more shots. And they were looking on the inside that time to Mehmet Okor, who was being guarded by Walton. But when you look to help, as Kobe did on the last play, on the driving Carlos Boozer, that frees up somebody to go to the rim, and Brewer was there to flush it back. That foul a moment ago on Luke, his third foul of the game. Rolls in the backcourt. Shot clock is at 10 as Darren Williams retreat. And he'll pop one right away. Williams did not score real well in the opening half. He was one of five. Now one of six, just two points. For Darren Williams. Kobe all the way in. And he flipped it over Kirilenko. 
That's why they want Kirilenko to have fouls to give, on, especially on Kobe, because Kobe's going to take just about everybody off the dribble. Aaron Williams averaging over 18 a game, out to a four for a three. Rebound, Boozer, and the putback. Didn't it just visually look like Andrew Bynum got shoved in the back by Carlos Boozer? I guess he just mistimed his jump because there was no complaint on the play. Well, a very subtle nudge. Well, Lamar has learned very quickly uh, playing against Kirilenko, not only this year, but in years past, that you got to put a body on Andre. But that rebound attempt by Andrew obviously mistimed, and there's Boozer to get an absolute easy one. Two free throws coming to uh, Lamar Odom, who's one for two tonight. Odom gives the Lakers a one-point lead. He has eight points now, three of seven floor. And now two of three from the line. Trying to get Luke back uh, involved in the offense a little bit too. You know, whether it's spotting up or taking uh, Mehmet Okor off the dribble because there's no way Mehmet Okor can guard Luke Walton off the dribble. Smosh picks up Darren Williams. Here's Kirilenko. And inside ball bobbled around off of Bynum. And back out for a four for a three. Six eleven class. Didn't say the only one, but he just camps out down around that three point line. And as Utah's first three pointer of the game, they were all for four before four made that block inside of the framework. Brewer, Brewer, Brewer. How did he save that? Boozer was throwing in an alley oop and Brewer wasn't ready for it, but he still saved the turnover. Yeah, it wasn't a bad, it wasn't a good pass by Brewer, I mean by Boozer, but Brewer with his athletic ability was able to get to it. Now oh fought on the other end, uh, Brewer following Kobe. But I tell you about Kirilenko being a secondary defender. All of a sudden he's up, swatting it away. Boy, he does that as well as anybody in the game. That's his fourth block shot already. For Kirilenko, Bynum will sit down. Kwame Brown will come back into the Laker pivot. Three minutes gone in the second half. Utah now with a one-point lead. 11-1 Utah Jazz, the best record in the league. Their best start ever. And Kobe drew it, reigns a three from the baseline. <laughs> Just elevated and stuck it. Uh, at least perspire when you do it, Kobe. Make it look a little difficult. 23 for Kobe, 14 in the first quarter, and now six quickly here in the third quarter. Okor getting inside the score with Odom. And that's a plus uh, for Jerry Sloan. Anytime they can get Okor in the paint and have him post up and do some stuff, that's a big plus. Utah shooting 51% from the floor. Smush Parker, a quiet game offensively, but he next one, next one down there. That's his first basket of the game, and he has four points. Utah, the second highest scoring team in the league, just a half a point behind the Denver Nuggets. There's a foul on Kwame Brown, bumping Brewer. Now, see, there's another one of those, Greg, where as a defender, you say, well, what did I do wrong? Tell me, official, what I did wrong. He runs into me, and I get the foul. So you got to explain to me what I did wrong. You know, that's either a no call, or I'd rather see a no call than to call a foul on the defender. First foul on Kwame Brown. Kirilenko looking it over. Smush Parker knocks it away on the dig. And now battle and a jump ball between Odin and Kirilenko. <laughs> oh, the look on Kirilenko's face. <laughs> he finally just has to break out in laughter. This will be an interesting jump ball with Lamar Odom and uh, Kirilenko. So either either team is saying to themselves, uh, we don't know who's going to control this, so we got to make sure we box out the man next to us and not let him steal the two. Kirilenko 6'9", Odom with those long arms at 6'10", and he stole it. Kirilenko never got up. Odom wins it decidedly. Well, it's, it helps if Kirilenko waits till the official throws the ball. <laughs> he jumps for the official three. Now he picks up Odom on the other end, Stu. Double team from Boozer. Odom goes baseline away from him. Kirilenko has five block shots tonight. 
Okay, you, he, he's just an amazing uh, defender. Like, if you don't literally put your body in his chest and negate his ability to get off the floor, he recovers so quick. You think he got him out of position, and he goes up and makes yet another block shot. There's Kobe right up over Brewer, and the rebound pulled by the Jazz, and Okur up the floor. Well, when you're the when you're the free safety, you've got to make sure you get that one in your eyesight and make that interception. Smush had it, but fingernails uh, weren't long enough. The game it out here in Salt Lake City. Yeah. 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 Smush Parker will get the ball back over to Utah. No defense can outrun the pass. When you're out in transition and the ball is passed as opposed to dribbled, it's tough to recover defensively. That's the great way to run the break. The ball never hit the ground. Right from the rebound up the floor to a duck. And Utah, when they play at home historically under Jerry Sloan the last 19 years, they run a lot more here. Here, Lingo almost lost it. Boozer does. Hit the backboard. Smush behind the back and poked out with... 6.41 to play in the third quarter. Lakers need some production on this trip down. They've been able to, you know, sustain their consistency uh, after falling behind by 11. They're tied now. And the Jazz crowd trying to get involved in this game. Good matchup on the sidelines of uh, two of the winningest coaches in the history of the NBA. Phil Jackson against Jerry Sloan. Right inside to Odom, off to Parker for a wide open three. Got it! Lakers go up 66 to 63. That was a good possession. Lakers didn't force anything. They had opportunities to go like one on one or they just chose to run their offense. Only a second basket of the game. Now he's got seven assists though to lead all players in that category. He's second in the NBA overall, still an assist behind only Steve Nash. Odom all the way in. Late foul there on Kirilenko. That one was called after Odom missed the shot. Well, so often happens, officials can be out of position, well, get blocked out of a play. That's why that third one will obviously make the call. Smush Parker wide open for a three, and that three pushed the Lakers up by one. Here. And by Honda. See your Honda dealer and discover the great values now being offered. 66-65, Lakers leading here in Utah with half the third quarter yet to go. This Sunday will be the fourth annual Chick Hearn Night. The Lakers will conduct their annual book drive where all collected books will be donated in Chick's memory to several Lakers reading and learning centers throughout the city. So please support the Lakers Read to Achieve program and bring a new children's book to Star Plaza between 4.30 and 6.30, the Lakers' fourth annual Chick Hearn night. Just a pleasure for me to be alongside uh, Stu Lance and hold the microphone that uh, Chick held for so many years. Greg Popley in for Joel Myers tonight. Joel has had a loss in his family. He's away for this game only. Our thoughts and prayers go out to Joel and his family. And it's 68-65 Lakers as Luke Walton, or pardon me, Lamar Odom at the free throw line knocks down both. and. Uh, he has 11 points. Luke out there along with Lamar and Smush and a foul called on Smush Parker. Shot the baseline there on the drive by Darren Williams. Smush's second foul of the game. Well, Darren did a good job of reading that Smush was anticipating where the screen was coming from. So he's leaning that direction. So Darren goes away from the screen and Smush trying to recover gets the foul. Quick foul again. It's on uh, Luke Walton, and that's his fourth foul. So just a nanosecond advances, and Luke picks up his fourth, and he's coming out of the game. And I think what Luke is complaining about, and Harpering is very good at this particular move, is when they're, he's running off of a screen, he'll come go close to the screen as he's supposed to do, but he also uses one of his arms to, like, grab a hold of the defender and make sure that he pulls him with him. Vladimir Radmanovic replaces... Luke Walton on the Laker front line. Five seconds to shoot for Utah. Williams off a foul. On the shot. And no basket. No basket. They get an offensive foul on the Jazz. They catch Harpering with the illegal screen. And that one, I thought he stood uh, pretty still on. But he might have moved his forearm a little bit as he had it down near his waist. He might, it might have come away from the body. 
And that really decked Smush Parker, so negate the basket. Next stoppage of play, Derek Fisher will re-enter for the Jazz. First year uh, player here in Salt Lake City after a couple of years with the Warriors after leaving the Lakers. Lamar Odom with a nice little curl along the baseline there and a jump hook, and the Lakers lead by five. And when Kirilenko goes out, everybody has to flourish up front <laughs> because their defense is not quite as effective without that uh, shot blocker, Andre Kirilenko. Hold up with six of his 13 here in the third quarter. Bad feed by Williams wide of Boozer. Right to Kobe Bryant. And a bumping foul there called on Brewer. That's the third foul of the game. For Brewer, Darren Williams will leave for Utah. Derek Fisher comes back in. Free throw time for the Lakers. And you were mentioning uh, the Chick Hearn book drive this Sunday. Monday would be Chick's birthday. Is that right? Yeah. Kobe knocks down the free throw. Gordon uh, Girovich back in for the Utah Jazz, or Gear Check back in. Kobe with 24 points tonight, 26 minutes of play. Kobe makes them both, and it's 72 65. Lakers by seven. Lakers on a 6 0 run to open up this seven point lead. And they have to sustain their defense here. Harpring over at Manovich gets the roll. And that's about where his limit is, and he knows that he's very good at staying within his limitations as far as uh, where on the floor he shoots the ball. Fisher knocked it away, and Manovich recovers for now, battling. And then they eventually lose it. Got to keep it away from Derek Fisher. No curve to Boozer, and they have been blocked inside by Kwame Brown. Certainly it was altered. That's, and sometimes that can be better than a block because altered shots normally are defensive rebounds, whereas block shots generally go out of bounds and give it back to the offensive team. Kwame Brown finds himself alone in the basket there as he powers in there and a curve. Kwame holding. He's back under the basket as Swoosh takes the foul eventually because he realized that the uh, Lakers were a man short. Seemingly got poked in the eye as, uh, as right he goes up. Memino Kaur, somewhere in that play, hits him in the eye, missed the shot, goes down, and Lakers are playing 5 on 4 now, or the Jazz are playing 5 on 4 and so Smush takes the intentional foul, sending Fisher to the line to shoot a pick. We're talking about big Laker fan, a longtime Laker fan, Esther Hansen. She lived in Minnesota for uh, about her first 50 years. Now she lives in uh, Vancouver, Washington. And she watches the Lakers. And her birthday was a couple of days ago. So she's been a Laker fan for quite some time. I'm not going to tell you that she's turned 90 just so, a couple of days ago. So she's seen all 14 NBA yeah, champions. Yeah, so. and they were Minneapolis Lakers. And five five there. there. Yeah, she's a big time fan. A lot of good basketball. George Mike and Minneapolis Lakers. Now the Lakers have won in LA. That man has cuts through and gets it. They go for three. That's a nice play. That's a nice play. And it's just a routine play. Pass and cut. Throw it into the post. Make your cut. And Kwame with the nice bounce pass. The foul. Good concentration by Rand. Redmanovich just kept his eye on the target, knowing the contact was going to come. Gets a three point opportunity, seeing if he can stretch the Lakers lead back to six. Foul on Boozer, still his second of the game. And we just dropped that 14 NBA championships out there rather casually. And think about the people in Salt Lake yeah. City. They've seen some great right. basketball here in the two decades that Jerry Sloan's been the head coach, but they've not been able to break through. They went to two NBA finals, obviously, and lost to Bill Jackson and Chicago Bulls. I was going to say, they just were unfortunate that they came along the same time as the Lakers were doing their thing and of course Michael in Chicago was doing his thing so it's unfair sometimes to think that some of the greatest players never got to experience the championships but so much of it can be luck as far as uh, what else is going on in the league. Kobe Bryant picked up the foul. Gierczyk next down the first free throw Gordan Gierczyk from Croatia. 
And a technical foul, I believe. That should be on the Laker bench. I think so. Technical foul's been called on the Laker bench. Gear check. We'll shoot the technical here and make it. Not sure who exactly on the bench got the technical foul. I think they're going to give it to Rambus. Is it on Rambus or Phil Jackson? Kurt Rambus. Look at the look. Kurt says. What okay. me? You got me, huh? Okay. Just think about what you're not going to hear that I'm thinking. All three free throws are made by Gearcheck, including the technical. He's got seven points, and the Laker lead now down to three. Gearcheck checking Kobe. 3.15 to play third quarter. Should be a very good fourth quarter here in Salt Lake City. Utah's not lost a home game all year. Just one loss all year. Shot clock at two. LeBron's got a fire, and he rails a three. <laughs> He looked up as if I knew the clock at all times, and I, I think he did. Big quarter for Lamar Odom. He has scored at nine of his 16 in the quarter. You know, defense, you have to talk anyhow, but especially against a team like the Jazz. You have to communicate to your teammates all the time. They make your work on the defensive end. This has always been one of the best screening teams mm -hmm. in basketball. Two and a half to play in the third quarter. And the Lakers continue with their consistent play, especially Lamar Odom, who has picked it up here in the third. And with 2.35 to play, the Lakers lead by three. We're asking, and Tim Thomas of the Clippers now up to 48%. Vlad Radmanovic of the Lakers, 37%. Marcus Banks of Phoenix checking in at 15%. Just text the number 86212 on your cell phone, and you could be the winner. You watch the Lakers play a game in Las Vegas coming up next October, so text your choice now. Of course, the, uh, the Jazz franchise used to play some games in Las Vegas at the Thomas and Mack Center back in the 80s. Sasha knocks down a three. Almost got fouled on that shot. Does not get a chance for a four-point play, but he nails a three. Well, I couldn't see I was at the angle of where his legs were, but either he got hit or he's just acting. How do you shoot a three and fall down if you don't get fouled? I think that's the point he made, but he railed the three. He even popped up and glared at Leroy Richards. In. Uh -oh. Lakers four of four on three pointers in this quarter. Well, let success be your guide. If you're knocking them down, you can uh, obviously look to take uh, more of those. But when you're not, you got to look to get a little closer. Lakers have hit seven of 13 on three pointers tonight. Derek Fisher gets two thirds of it back. And it's 81 to 77. Fisher with eight points off the bench for Jerry Sloan. Sloan's team's uh, historically. Yeah, but not defended the three-point shot very well. They build their defense inside out and don't defend the three real well. He stepped out. He Sasha stepped, stepped out on the catch. Turnover. Well, so many players uh, are so aware of that three-point line in the corners, and there's not a lot of space between the three-point line and that sideline. And if they try to stay behind the three-point line, they step out of bounds. Much shorter shot in that baseline, 22 feet as opposed to 23 9. 21 inches shorter. Fisher will back up now. Shot clock under 10. Shot clock at 5. Odom. Shot clock at 1. Just don't foul now. It's going to sound. 24 second violation on what a Fisher. What a defensive play there by Lamar Odom. Switched out on Derek Fisher. Derek picks up his dribble, and the long arms of Lamar just engulfed him. He had nowhere to go with it and just about forced the jump ball, but would prefer the turnover. Quick foul here called on Utah. That's called freedom of movement. As Lamar was trying to run across the floor, Millsap chucked him, gave him a little forearm, and uh, they they said a few years ago that they were going to take that out of basketball. Let this game have, let the players have a little bit more freedom of movement. Uh, here's Odom getting uh, better and better as the game goes. Nine of the 16 here in the third quarter. Jerry Sloan working the official on the sideline. And he's one of those coaches that can work an official. Yeah, he might have worked him too much. Yep, there it is. Technical. Phil Johnson, his longtime assistant, will step in and keep 
<laughs> Filling the game. He's Jerry P. Working too much. So since Lamar has uh, got the stroke working, he's going to go ahead and shoot the tee. He's six out of seven from the strike. This is the technical foul. And then after this one, he still has one more coming on the, uh, the regular foul. And going for the hat trick. I think Jerry wanted to take one there. He sure worked him enough. I could. I was looking down there and thinking Jerry's working him, working him, and the official was just standing there saying, "Okay, go ahead, keep it going." I'll give you probably another five words and then. Pocketbook. John Stockton and Carl Malone are long gone here in Salt Lake City. Jerry Sloan continues. 19th year coaching this team. He's the longest tenured coach or manager in uh, the four main sports. Even more than Bobby Cox of the Atlanta Braves of uh, baseball to Bill Cowell of the Pittsburgh Steelers in the NFL. 19 years here in Utah. Hard ring. Rebounded by Sasha. Lakers up six. Got a two for one coming here. Bobby Brown has time. A little work though. Missed. And Omar Evans knocks the ball off a jazz inside. Local ball. And Reese Evans loves, all players do though, but especially Maurice loves to go to the offensive glass for tips. They don't box him out. Kwame goes up for the shot and he comes from behind and causes the ball to go off the jazz. Here's the two for one right here at about 30. Back door oh. throw to Odom on the fade. He got fouled. He got fouled. Now well, we got two shots coming to Lamar as the Lakers lead by six. He can make it seven or eight. Working without the ball. Gets the pass. Fall away. Where's <laughs> the contact? I don't know. They called it on Millsap also. He was nowhere near Odom. Where, where's the contact? Lakers get a break there. Millsap who was struggling tonight to find any kind of a rhythm. And he's been a big, big part of their success. He has three fouls. And Derek Fisher now will pick up the case for Jerry Sloan. Where's the foul here? Well, the shove, the sh it might have been right before he turned to shoot. It was a little bit of contact, but if you're going to call that as a foul all the time, then, ooh, there's going to be a lot of free throws. Yeah, the Lakers cash in. Lamar Odom. Just making free throw after free throw. And he now has 13 points in the quarter and 20 for the game on 9 of 11 free throw shooting. Why are the Lakers fouling there? And Manovich fouling. And Gierczek will be on the line for Utah. Gordon Gierczek. Makes it a seven point game. Kobe Bryant's going to come back in here, maybe to take the last shot of the quarter. And Kwame Brown will sit down. Kobe with the 25 points and only on only 15 shot attempts. And I say that because you know in this league or in any uh, at any level, if your shot uh, point total equals your shot attempt total, you haven't necessarily had a, a good night. But he's having a pretty good night. But Kobe averages about 15 shots a game and he averages 24 points a, a game. He's got the whole fourth quarter to go. There he is against Gerecek. Out the baseline and a three pointer is made from the baseline there by Mo Evans. And that's what they like to do. They like to get it and let Kobe have, they uh, flatten it out and they give him some space, give him the opportunity to drive and kick. Lakers now with their biggest lead, a nine pointer here. Fisher at the pressure run is going to three. We've seen, <laughs> yeah, I've seen that a number of times. Uh, Derek Fisher weaving his way down the floor. You know, you want to see players have to give it up, especially guards, but he's just weaving, weaving, and then elevates. No question that it counts. He, they'll review it, but there's no question that that one is good as Derek Fisher gives the Jazz a little bit of mo going into the fours. A great holiday. They made five consecutive from long range. Kobe. Then it went to smush. Lamar said, I can do it too. Sasha said, huh, what do you think my specialty is? And Marie Seven said, look, let me put the capper on him as he made the fifth and final from long range. The five three-point garage in the third quarter. 
And the Lakers lead by six here, get inside with Kobe Bryant. And a foul underneath the basket. Called on Utah. Holding foul on Gierczek. Will be on the free throw line. Gierczek picks up his second foul. It never ceases to amaze me. I, I can see how some players can get open, but how do the best players get open? That open, you know, Kobe was un open under the basket. Gets an easy pass and knocks down the first of two. Well, the Lakers weren't making threes in that third quarter. Lamar Odom was making free throws. He was eight out of nine alone in the quarter from the line. The Lakers from the free throw line tonight now are 23 out of 26. And Kobe with the miss. Rebound to Boozer. Greg Fisher runs the Jazz as their point guard. Gierczek plays the off guard. Matt Harpering with the ball. The small forward the front line of uh, Boozer. And O'Kerr. Foul called on Sasha. Well, after Derek passed the ball, Sasha didn't give him any space to cut. And then when uh, Derek tried to rub his man off to the screen, Sasha's called for the hole. But that's just a very uh, smart veteran play there by Derek Fisher. Sasha picks up his third foul. He and Kobe the backcourt right now with Benavich, Luke, and Kwame the front line. Gear check over Luke Walt. Nice defense by Luke and an air ball. Boy, both Kobe and Luke challenging that shot, and Gearcheck says, hmm, I better make one in a minute or else uh, Coach might get mad at me for shooting uh, all these bricks. He's only three out of five, not that, but the two that he's missed. They've been bad they, misses. They've been bricks. There he is trying to check Kobe, and a miss pulled down by Boozer. Utah, they've not lost at home all year. They only have one loss all season anywhere. They were beaten in, in New Jersey on November the 8th. There's Boozer, their, go -to guy. their last game in Sacramento, Stu, they had an unbelievable fourth quarter. They outscored the Kings 39 to 17. They made a habit of falling behind in games and then stealing them late. That Manovich, high arcing three. Rebound Boozer. Nobody picks up this year. Got to stop the ball. Oh, yeah. First rule of defense in transition stop the basketball. Derek Fisher goes 80 feet with the ball. Nobody makes a move to stop him, so he gets a layup. And that got Paul, I'll tell you, you can't do that very often and win games. in the Pacific Division early through the new year. Tim Thomas now has half the vote. We'll see Tim Thomas and the Clippers a week from tomorrow in the next KCAL game. And the uh, hallway series continues. Still time to vote. Just text the number 86212 on your cell phone and uh, be a part of it tonight. Lakers with the lead now down to three and it goes back up to five very quickly as Luke Walton takes it all the way in. And that was almost as bad a defense as the Lakers. <laughs> she they let Luke dribble the ball from well beyond the three-point line for a layup. Out of the half-court set. Utah did that. Uh, nobody picked up Derek Fisher a moment ago. Dribbled all the way in for a layup. Bill Jackson stopped it and then in the half-court. Luke Walton gets it. Bodies falling. Smush hits the deck. No foul on Boozer. And Utah will reset. Utah with a 10 rebound edge tonight. 33-23. Boozer. Again, I, I said it in the first half. The better screen you set, better chance for you to get the shot. And Carlos Boozer is setting a mean screen. Matt Harpering knocked it away. Saved it. Darren Williams. Well, defense by Harpering made that happen. Sneak attack along the baseline. We're down by a point. Lakers led by nine late third quarter. And now the edge is just one for the Lakers. Yeah, the defense call here on Utah again. Got a heart ring, I believe. Well, the last, the last deal led him to think he could possibly sneak attack another one, but he was caught in an Ill illegal position. But that's the play that got the Jazz to within one. Hustle play by Harpering. They score easily. Now Kobe to shoot the team. 
Cody's missed two in a row. He missed his last three throws, then he misses this technical here. That's unusual for number 24. He had made six of his first seven tonight from the line. Had a huge free throwing game on Tuesday against the Clippers on the way to 40 when he made 15 of 18. Shot clock at six. Luke Walton behind the back with four, three, two. Smosh gets it off in time. And the rebound to Utah. And they can take the lead back. And a lot of game left to play. Nine minutes about. Boozer, the wraparound to Hartland. Hartland back up in the crowd. Boozer, oh, he's relentless on the offensive boards. They let him play a long time without a whistle as they were trying to get those missed shots. Well, Boozer's just after it, after it. The ball is tipped up. Boozer secures it, goes up, knocks down Kwame, and they call Kwame for the block. So two free throws coming. To Carlos Boozer. Boozer to tie the game. He does at 91. 26 points, 13 rebounds for Boozer still. I think Boozer's free throw is a little bit higher than Derrick's. <laughs> I think he's way up there. But I guess you don't mess with success. And, uh, he's uh, four out of six from that, uh, from that position on the floor tonight. Round ball. Round basket, the theory has always been to get it up high. They really get it up high. Ah! Yeah, Purvis short shot. No Purvis short. Yeah, Purvis is. His, all of his shots were like that, though. They were nice, though. Not down the line, on the floor. One of the great scorers in the NBA in the mid 80s. Carlos Boozer makes both. He has 27 points. Cody Bryant has 26 for the Lakers. And here we go. Bobby Brown right to work. And one. And the Lakers have a one-point lead going on two. Nicely done by Kwame. Well, working on Okor. Okor trying to draw the offense. Not really challenging the shot, per se, as opposed to just staying grounded and getting position. But Kwame backs him completely under the basket. Shoots a little jump hook. Goes to the line. See if he can make it a three-point play. Yep. Another mess for the Lakers. From the line. Laker lead. They still won. Lakers have missed three of the four free throws this quarter. Smush Parker with the steal. Here's the bar order. Nice Smush wants it back up top. Nice anticipation by Smush. Kwame. No, back up. Yes. Well, he's working Okor over under the, uh, under the basket. I mean, Okor. Maybe 6'11 or so, but Kwame's just so so much stronger. Kwame Brown, 11 points tonight, five rebounds. Looking to continue after his very strong game against the Clippers on Tuesday. Off one foot, off two points to shot. He has 13 points himself, and it's a one-point game. Of course, thank goodness there's another end of this floor. That's where I do my damage. Bobby Brown along the base. And a third block the shot, but a foul, and then he threw it off the stanchion. Yeah, that's the T this year. He threw it off the stanchion. So Kobe will shoot the T, and then Kwame will shoot two free throws. Good drop step, gets hit across the uh, shoulder area. <laughs> In the uh, disappointment from Limino Core. Can Kobe go for the hat trick? I don't think so. No. He had missed the previous two, but he makes that free throw. And the Lakers are up 96-94. Kobe Bryant with 27 points. Now, the free throw is coming from Kwame Brown. Kwame Brown is at five two. Kwame with 10 points, a team high 14 rebounds against the Clippers on Tuesday. And he's following it up tonight with a very strong game off the bench. Yeah, he is. Really good game off the bench because he's got 12 points, five rebounds, and he's uh, making his free throw so far. Two out of three. And then obviously that's uh, that's good for Tom. Three out of four. Three out of four, even better. About a 37% from the line coming into the game. For the Lakers. Hey. Oh, 
back the other way from Carlos Boozer. Too easy. Oh, he back for Boozer. Ran a sort of slip screen there. Kwame stepped out to help a little bit, and uh, Boozer was gone. Laker lead is two. Being fronted by O'Quirr this time, gonna take it right at him though, he can't stop him. No, they should, they should, they should milk that situation for as long as they possibly can. Force Jerry Sloan to bring in Collins or somebody. It's back up center, Jaron Collins, a little more size, and more of an interior player. There's Boozer, poked away by Kwame Brown, the Lakers can't save, it's over the end line. As so often happens with offensive players, they'll beat their man off the dribble, but they forget to sh either shorten their dribble or change hands with it. Kwame just reached around, tipped it free. If you shorten it, they'll reach around and hit you on the elbow, which is a foul. But if you change hands, they won't get anything. Well, before the inbounds is triggered, no holding foul there. Well on Smush Parker, and that's his fourth foul of the game. Very high-scoring game here. The Lakers already... In a triple figures and uh, Utah approaching and we still have half the fourth quarter yet to play. Darren Williams will be on the line. Let's check in with John Ireland courtside. John. Greg as Smush picks up his fourth foul there. You might be wondering where's Jordan Farmar. If you joined us late Jordan is on the trip. He's actually in the locker room. But he's in street clothes. He practiced yesterday and again today. Phil Jackson says he probably could have played tonight, but didn't want to throw a rookie out there against Utah. Jordan might be back on Sunday, but they can't use him tonight. It's Smush and Sasha at that guard spot. Back to you. All right, John, thanks for the update. Luke Walton almost lost it on the dribble. Kobe goes back door. Shot clock under 10. Odom trying to rewarm after his big third quarter. Shot clock at four. Dumped on to Walton, a quick one to Kwame Brown. And, uh, off with two on the clock, and the Lakers turned it over. Now that the shot clock was becoming an issue despite the turnover, but uh, a nice try there by Luca. You could see what he was thinking. Is he thought Kwame would be free. Okay, the big man can shoot. And the Bulls down the defensive end by Kwame Brown, but he answers back with a three-pointer, and Utah takes the lead. A turnover on one end, a three-pointer on the other end. And Utah goes up 101 to 100. He was pure equal back in the game. Now he's out there guarding Kobe. That's over to help, but he can't stop. Lamar Odom, beautifully done by Lamar Odom. What a game he has had. He has 20 points in addition to Kobe's 27 points. Here, Loco not looking. And the ball almost hit Bill Jackson. And a feed by Darren Williams. Well, the Lakers have been pretty good about not turning the ball over, but the last turnover they had led to a three-pointer by Mehmet Okor. That's what the Lakers don't want to have happen. They lead by one. Offside, Stu Lance to John Ireland, Greg Papa here in Salt Lake City, 102-101. Utah scored over 100 points in each of their 11 wins this year. And dating back to last year, they have 21 straight victories when they get to 100. So the Lakers trying to snap that streak. Is this going to be one of those last possession games? Could be. Five minutes to go. Boozer on the overplay knocks it out. Well, a player driving toward the baseline. The weak side defense has to realize the only passing lane he basically has is along the baseline. Shot clock at 10 as they inbound. They've got to hustle. Odom with five. Into Kwame. Again over. Okoro came back to block his shot this time. And it's off of Kwame Brown. Yes, it is. I think he's going to call a loose ball foul on Kwame. Yeah. It's on Kwame. Okoro comes back, blocks his shot, and then gets a foul on Kwame. But well, Kwame just puts it in his hand almost that time. Really didn't elevate on the shot. So Okoro just reaches out and gets the block. Well, it was off of Kwame. It also was a foul on Kwame Brown before it went out. His third foul of the game. O'Kerr trying to score inside. And the rebound to Lamar Odom. Back come the Lakers. Here's that matchup we knew we'd see down the stretch. One of the great defenders in the game, Andre Kirilenko. AK-47 up against Kobe Bryant. And the handoff, and Kirilenko slapped it away. Who's the foul on? It's on uh, uh, Lamar, illegal screen. Oh, man. Kirilenko slapped right through it, and they get the foul on Odin. 
rules say that you can't turn and hand the ball off at the same time on a, like a pinch post situation, and that's what they're ruling, what they're ruling that Lamar did, turning and handing at the same time. If there's any contact, they're going to blow the whistle on you. Fourth foul on Odom, even though Kirilenko put that forearm right across Kobe. Now Kobe will pick him up on the other end. Here's Matt Harpering with travel. Well, the Lakers played a little zone that time. I don't know if that caught the Jazz by a surprise or not, but Harpering running with the ball before he put it on the floor. So another uh, turnover for the Jazz gives it right back to the Lakers. Lakers down the stretch. Play Smush Parker and Kobe Bryant, Luke Walton, Lamar Odom, and Kwame Brown in the middle. Here's Luke against Boozer. Comes out the weak side to Smush. Held it a bit and then missed a three. Had a shot, didn't take it right away. Williams, Karolinko, poked away by Kobe Bryant, but a foul called. That's free throw time. Just under four minutes to play, 359. Kirilenko goes to the line to give the Jazz a lead. Andre Kirilenko, an all-star a couple of years ago. All-NBA defensive first-teamer last year and a two-time All-NBA defensive second-teamer. And he knocks it down. Five fouls on Smush Parker. Kirilenko, not a big offensive night his first game back after missing five with an ankle injury, but five block shots. And he's got Kobe Bryant down the stretch. Utah by one. Four minutes to play. Maybe the marquee matchup in the NBA this early part of the year. 11-1 Jazz, 8-3 Lakers. Shot clock at 10. Harper against Odom. Back out to Kobe. A three-pointer by Kobe. Rebound, Walton. Had it, lost it. Diving for it. Karolinko came up with it. Darren Williams oh. by Kobe Bryant at the rim. <laughs> oh. Kwame back up and out to Walton and they'll pull it out. What a block by Kobe Bryant. <laughs> Kobe set the angle up and he elevated. Right at Karolinko. Luke Walton a three, short. Luke the rebound back up. He'll be on the line for two. Bodies all over the floor. Oh, that all, all made possible though by the defense of number 24. Darren Williams says, I'm flushing this with coaches. No, no, no. Young man, you better elevate a little higher. He meets him at the top. Wow. Sends it back. With a left hand. What a block. <laughs> and on the other end, Luke Walton gets the foul on Carlos Boozer. Four fouls on Boozer, and Walton makes the free throw. We are tied at 103. That's some defensive play by number 24. Let's see what the Lakers can do now. If that will inspire them to play better defense for the final 309. Walton gets both. Lakers by one. Walton with 13 points tonight. 104-103. Now Kobe picks up Darren Williams. Lakers in a zone. Jazz trying to get themselves in position. Long walk by Williams over the top of the zone. Rebound up here. And they'll reset. That's what you give up in the zone. Rebounds. Offensive rebounds. And Utah now a 12 rebound edge. Now uh, the Lakers right around their average for the year. They had rebound their opponents by more than 11 a game. From the corner of three by Harper. And another rebound by Utah. Pulls it. Go back to man. <laughs> Gonna match up because you're not getting the glass cleared. Boozer bottled it. Free ball. Boozer picks it up. Okay. That's a two-pointer. A long two by Good job by one. Give them three opportunities. You're generally going to pay the price. Now it's Kobe and Kirilenko. Bobby Brown a screen. Two minutes remaining, two minutes. Into Kwame. Against O'Kerr. They double up. Shot clock at five. Corner. Smush Parker. What are you doing? <laughs> Hold him. No, it was halfway down and popped out. Wow. Those are the shots that the Lakers made in the third quarter when they were five for five from three-point land. 
Everybody out there in Utah. Shot clock under 10. Dan Williams blocked by Smush Parker. And he recoils and nails the jumper. Got it back. Timeout, Phil Jackson. Utah with a 42 27 rebounding edge tonight. Yeah, doing the job. The Lakers down by three. Now they know they need more of what Kobe Bryant gave them a minute ago. They have to score and yet prevent the score. The Jazz lead by three. Second chance opportunities. Well, a minute ago, Smush blocks the jump shot, but it goes right back to Darren Williams, who elevates it, knocks it home, and that gave the Jazz their three-point advantage. Now, with a minute and 26 to play, the Lakers have to be clean. The one area where they've been really hurt in this game is offensive rebounds. They've given up 15 offensive rebounds. Here we go. Kobe Bryant has not made a basket here in the fourth quarter. He only has two points, both on free throws. Kirilenko's done a good job against them. All the way in, Odom. Lamar Odom takes it right into the teeth of the defense and draws a foul, and he'll go for a three-point play. Boy, that's coming out of the wow. hole with a, a quick strike. Handoff, turn, contact. Wow. They, they ruled that he wasn't set. Continuation, obviously. He makes just, the basket. Chance to tie the game. What a great play by Lamar Odom with Kobe unable to score a hoop down the stretch. Odom with a big basket now for a three-point play to tie it. Well, here in the fourth, Kobe has really been uh, trying to be the, the facilitator. He's been very demonstrative about getting the ball into the post to Kwame and Lamar. So let's see what happens in the final minute. Odom with 25 points. We are tied. Okay, audible crowd in. Shot clock under 10. Williams behind the screen. Rattles down to three. And he is having a quiet night, and now he comes alive. Darren Williams has scored nine of his 13 in the fourth quarter. And his last five have been enormous. Parker doesn't want to shoot. And the dish off and around the rim and goes it out to Lamar Odom. Darren Williams saves. Darren Williams is fouled in the backcourt by Luke Walton. His pick. Luke pleads his case. Smush Parker, a little hesitant to shoot sometimes tonight. We'll take it inside here. Now that's one that obviously uh, Lamar wishes he had back. That's a, an absolute gimme. Now down by three, going on four or five with 38 seconds. Lakers in trouble. Darren Williams makes it a four-point game. The, fine, uh, the last seven by the Jazz. And he's gotten hot. He has made seven straight. Make it eight straight Utah points here, Stu. And the Lakers got five. And they have to hurry. They, they don't have the luxury now of any time. Lamar will take it right in, miss it, foul, and a foul on the drive. Big break for the Lakers there. <laughs> I haven't seen Jerry Sloan move that quick since his playing days. <laughs> he, he's disputing this call as Lamar goes in, Don misses Harper. the shot, will go to the line and shoot two. Jerry was almost in the tunnel <laughs> after the whistle sounded. Lamar Odom. What a free throwing night he has had. 10 out of 12 after a 4 for 10 free throwing game Tuesday. And he needs both of these. Can't even have one. You need them both. That, he won't get both. But with one there, you're in a position where you don't have to do any fouling or anything. You'd only be down. I mean, if you make both, you're only down three. So, so one possession yeah. down. Now you're in a position where even if he makes this one, it's still a two possession game. He made it. It's a four-point game. 32.3 to go. A long way to go. Harpering back to Williams yes. over the top. Well, don't foul now. If you didn't foul early, I guess you're going to have to play it out, huh? I don't know why. They're yeah. going to milk all of uh, what they have. They've got 12 or 11 of the 18. Lakers got to get a stop here. Well, Kerr tees up a three. Rebound to Boozer. And that's the way this game is going. Utah all over the offensive glass tonight. Well, it's been offensive rebounds. I said it just a minute ago. Offensive rebounds 
have absolutely destroyed the Lakers. 16 offensive rebounds spell defeat. He's got seven offensive rebounds. 31 and 16. Wow. Carlos Boozer having a monster game tonight. 31 points, 16 rebounds due, and he has seven of the rebounds on the offensive glass. Yeah, that's uh, that's been the difference. I mean, in the last offensive rebound, even though he had, he got it and took it right back in, he really didn't even have to. He could have just pitched it out, and they've got enough points right now. Lakers need a three post haste. Kobe with the miss, and that'll do it. Kobe Bryant did not score a basket in the fourth quarter tonight. And Utah wins it. Carlos Boozer, 31 points and 16 rebounds. They got a big fourth quarter from Darren Williams. And they are for real. This team didn't even make the playoff the last three years. They have the NBA's best record. Utah goes to 12-1. And the Lakers, their four-game win streak is over. And they fall to...